So unless you've been living under a rock recently, you've probably seen that we've announced Turbo Pack, which is a bundler that basically is the successor to Webpack written in Rust. The creator of Webpack, Tobias Coppers, Mr. Webpack, actually works at Vercel too. So him and Maya Teagarten have been really pushing it internally. Turbo Pack is pretty freaking fast as well. You can see here that it starts up really, really quickly on a cold start, and it also does file changes super rapidly as well. The file changes in particular stay like the same no matter how many components you have in your React applications. And on a cold start with 5,000 React components in your app, then it starts up in 3.6 seconds. This got released uh, a few weeks ago, kind of at NextConf, and it's in an alpha state at the moment. You can try this today by creating a next app with like create next app like this or npx create next app. And when you've done that, you'll end up with this kind of app that looks like this, which you've probably seen before if you've used next. What you get is inside the package.json, you've got a dev script called next dev. To try out turbo pack, all you need to do is go next dev turbo. To try this out, we can run pnpm run dev, and that's going to run our dev script. And we get this nice little message here from turbo pack saying, thank you for trying it out. And initial compilation 74 milliseconds. Okay, pretty freaking quick. And we've got our next app ready for us here. The mission for the first version of Turbo Pack is going to be to support everything that Next Dev supports. And you can see here that like we've already got some warnings like unsupported module, the module next head is not supported. There will be things that come up when you run this on your applications, and if you do report it as an issue on the next repo. So why is TurboPack so fast? And especially why is it faster in some metrics than Vite? Because Vite is like a really, really quick bundler and it's, it's kind of our benchmark in terms of where we want to get to in terms of speed. The way that Vite works is it's really quick because it does as little bundling as possible. What it does, it basically says, okay, browser, what I'm gonna to do to you is I'll give you first an index.jsx, let's say, or tsx, and then from that index.tsx, let's say that that module imports utils, then that imports get user and get post. What it does is it basically turns all of those into native ESM modules that the browser then sort of does all the compilation for you, or not the compilation, but it does all of the linking of the modules for you. So what it does, it requests all of those individually. Now, when you have thousands and thousands of these, like Vite itself is incredibly fast, but the browser gets pretty slow because what it's trying to do is just like get all of these modules in and understand them. The way that TurboPack works is it takes each of these modules and bundles them into a big one, and that big one actually minimizes the number of requests that get made to the browser, meaning that the browser does less work, but all of this work ends up being done by TurboPack, which it can do much faster than the browser. In fact, we see a feature where Vite and TurboPack can uh, work together because Vite is a pretty high level framework and TurboPack, as we'll see, is like super low level. So TurboPack could potentially power Vite in the future if they were up for that. Now, the reason TurboPack is so fast is that it's got this incremental computation engine inside it. Now, inside a bundler, you usually need to you know, read files, bundle those files, concatenate them together, create you know lots and lots of different tasks. This is an extremely simple representation. But what TurboPack does is that it remembers what each function was called with and what it returned. So what it can do is on the first run, it reads a bunch of files, bundles them together, concatenates them, and remembers all of the outputs. Then the next time it runs, let's say you've changed sdk.ts. It knows that it needs to read sdk.ts again, needs to bundle it again, needs to concatenate it again, and full bundle it again. But it doesn't even need to read API.ts or bundle API contents because it knows exactly what those things have returned and you know that you haven't changed them. This concept then of incremental computation, because it's written in Rust as well, so it's at the speed of native, this is what powers all of TurboPack's speed improvements. If you think about it, there's actually nothing about the Turbo engine itself that's to do with bundling. All it's doing is just saving the results of functions. So you can imagine this would make almost any process a lot faster, you know, like uh, Turbo tests in the future where it only reruns the tests that it needs to. Like there's a lot going on here at this very sort of granular caching that you can imagine being open to lots and lots of use cases. 
So what does the future of TurboPack look like? Well, in the future, TurboPack will be able to save the results of all of its caching and stuff to the file system, meaning that on subsequent runs, you'll get even, even faster. If this sounds familiar, then you might have seen TurboRepo before, which allows you to do caching of your monorepo's tasks or your codebase's tasks. And we really see TurboRepo and TurboPack as being one build system, you know? Like TurboRepo can do caching for your tasks, but TurboPack can handle caching at a super granular level at the bundler. In fact, TurboRepo already does something really cool with its cache, which is it can store it remotely. That means that the first time you run a build, you know, it, it actually runs the build, but the second time it actually restores the files from the cache, meaning you get these crazy, crazy build times. Imagine if you could do that, but with a cache as granular as TurboPacks, meaning you can save the results of individual functions into a remote cache, share them with your CI, share them with your team. The next thing we need to talk about with TurboPack's future is that we want it to be the successor to Webpack. Webpack is an extremely low-level, configurable, extensible bundler that can really take on any task when it comes to turning one style of JavaScript thing to another. A lot of this extensibility comes from, yes, plugins, you know, Webpack plugins, plugins for TypeScript, plugins for different frameworks like Svelte and Vue, plugins for CSS, for PostCSS, for all of this different stuff. There's lots of unanswered questions about plugins too. Like, we don't know yet what shape they're going to be. We probably know they're not going to be API compatible with your current set of plugins, but we're going to be working closely with the community and also porting a lot of plugins ourselves to make sure that the future migration from Webpack to TurboPack is as smooth as it can possibly be. So we are starting with Next, but in the future, we want Turbo to be at the heart of everything you do in terms of building and bundling. In the future, you'll think of Turbo as a single place to go for everything you need to make your CI, your build faster. If you want to learn more about TurboPack, then you should go to turbo.build. That's a place that we've stored all of the information to do with TurboPack and TurboRepo now too. I've written a bunch of docs on TurboPack there to explain how everything works at a super low level. And if you want to see more videos like this, then you should subscribe to Vercel. We've got all of the talks from NextConf up here and you should like and do all that fun stuff too. See you soon.